Why the city this morning? It's mad. <laughs> every piece of fern, every fallen silver birch. <clears throat> oh, oh, spider. That's where we're going. Good morning folks, welcome back, hope you're keeping well, it's uh, what is it, it's quite a climb up there, <laughs> that's what it is, <laughs> where am I, what time is it, what's the weather forecast, <sighs> and breathe, a bit of light over there, let's try and find some light, I'm sorry it's a bit dark, it's a little after sunrise, there's a hill behind me, an unusual feature in these parts. Temperature's about 16 degrees, I think. It's grey, overcast, and it's likely to stay like that all day. Yeah, I might get wet today. So why? It's only water. I don't know where to begin with this place. I really don't know where to begin with it. Um, I've got so much in my mind right now. All sorts of stuff kicking off around here. And a lot of it's good news. I'll share some of it, the major part of it, with you in a bit. This is a site of special scientific interest. It's the ancient oak woodland I mentioned in a previous video. And I've decided to come back here for two reasons. One is because I didn't want to leave too much of a gap between mentioning it in a previous video and coming out and visiting it. The other is because <laughs> I have one of the bits of good news. I won't keep referencing a previous video, so I'll, I'll apologise for repeating myself if I've crossed double territory here, but I've come in directly from behind where you are this morning and uh, walked straight into this, the base of this hill, the peak of which is over there somewhere. Now I've only ever ridden on my bike through here to somewhere else and the route takes me along the outer edge of this this wood and it brings me around the base of this hill and then a trail disappears off up into the distance to where there's a, a huge pine forest. So that's the only view I've had of this wood. This is all completely new to me and it's took my breath away this morning walking in here. Today's light is far from ideal obviously but I'm imagining already a band of mist just creeping over the top of this hill and working its way down the hillside and me walking in with my camera at whatever o'clock. It's going to be quite epic I think. There's some beautiful tree formations, guys like this next to the guys like this, next to loose limbs and we've got all sorts of features and character and mixture of oak and beech and birch and it's quite a nice mixed woodland, it really is beautiful. I have to accept I can't give you all the information in one poof go. There's basically a circle running around me and I mean pick up a protractor, draw yourself a circle and we've got one of those running around us right now. I don't know any, of any significance to that. I've got no idea whatsoever, but I'll do some more research and try and find out more about it. What I do know is that this woodland was planted 
approximately early to mid 1800s. I don't know why, I don't know by whom, and I don't understand it. So it's exciting and interesting, and I know little about the history of this particular hill. It feels amazing. There's a vibe to it, as there are many woodlands, but this one just feels like stuff's happened here. It has to have done. This doesn't exist by accident. Okay, at the risk of waffling or repeating myself, I'll try and keep it brief. That direction, about a mile, is the remnants of an old coal mine. There are two areas to it. When you look at it on Google Maps, you've got one big grey scar, which is where the actual mine was, and then just to the northwest of that, there's a trail, and there's another huge grey scar blot on the landscape, which is where they used to excavate all the waste material. They built a huge mountain of it. Big grey, nothing grew there. <laughs> Stinky, massive, seaweed smelling stuff. Anyway. I'd noticed on Google Earth that, that Mount Everest site had changed and more than half of it had been covered in sand. But I didn't know what the plan for the area was, so I've done a little bit of research and the good news is, I'm happy to report, that the Wildlife Trust, who manage and maintain this area, have a project underway to reclaim the old colliery site. and. There's an area, I kid you not, I think it's around 250 acres of old colliery site are in the process of being reclaimed, replanted, and what's absolutely amazing is reconnected with the current Shield Forest National Nature Reserve, if that becomes possible. Won't go into loads of detail. So this is a real, a real leap forward for Sherwood Forest because it's going to reconnect areas of woodland and ancient land like this that were separated and isolated for centuries. That's it. I shan't, I shan't bore you with any more. Oh, it's grow. So, that's the second reason I wanted to come out here today. I wanted to do a recce. I wanted to have a look at this hillock from this side because I've never been in on foot. I've never shot here. I've never even imagined what a composition might be like here because I've never seen it. So everything is brand new to me as it is to you this morning, if you've never been here. Anyway, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna try and get a shot or two in. Um, one place I know I will get some light is way over the other side of this place. And it means going straight up this hill, over the other side, down through the oak forest and dropping down a hill which I think I mentioned on the previous video, it was somewhere I'd never been and I wanted to see. So I'm going to go and mooch about, check out this hill, I'll give you a view, and then as I make my way across, hopefully when I pick a shot up next, I'll uh, pull you back, explain my thoughts, and make my way down to another little feature that might be quite interesting this morning, even with little light. Not explained that very well, but I'm excited, you see. <laughs> I'm excited to see this. I'm excited for what the regeneration program's doing. And, uh, oh, and I've also got uh, my replacement 18 mm lens with me. So God forbid I get an opportunity to take any shots with that today. But uh, any chance, half chance I get, I'll pop it on the camera and see what it does. I'm at the top of the hill. It drives me nuts when I see things like that burnt out tree. Oh, what's wrong with people, eh? What is wrong with them? Okay, let's put that behind us a second. I came in down there, at the bottom of the hill. There's a path the circle that I mentioned running around and what it does is it follows where the light is there that's the base of the hill off in the distance all the way around 
back down to where I came in. So that's a huge perimeter to enclose a wood. And it was planted around, eight, eight, I think, 1840, 1850, something like that. But I don't know why it intrigues me. We'll try and find out. I'm headed that way. So I've gone straight up the hill, over the top, down the other side. But apart from the fire damage, there's some beautiful trees. There's not a twisted looking fella here. How cool is that? He's really got his wiggle on, hasn't he? Looks like some sort of helix. Another one there in the background. Another one down there dancing. Yeah, some really, really beautiful trees in here. And I love this view up the hill. You really do get a sense of awe from these. They're not huge trees. Not in Sherwood terms, but still incredibly beautiful. So there's a couple of interesting perspectives here that I could give mention to. One is, obviously from the base of the hill looking up into the canopy and from the top of the hill hull <laughs> actually with a view down on the trees almost we're well, not quite that high but it's certainly a view a perspective it's a little bit more elevated I'm going to uh, mooch about, mixed woodland coming up, I can see the change in the, the forest floor and I think we're going straight out the other side. Try and get a camera out on a composition, I'll bring you back when I've got a shot of some sort, even if it's grey. <laughs> I'll catch you in a minute. What an interesting place. There's scenes everywhere with sufficient light. There's a lot in a small area. Sadly, I don't quite have enough light to take any shots inside the hill. I'll call that inside the hill, inside the perimeter. I'm actually on, this is the trail. This is the trail that runs around the outside. That goes off around to the left there and sweeps all the way around this entire place comes back here. I really want to know why. I want to know what it's for. Was it an old ditch, a medieval ditch originally that's been filled in? There's talk of this place uh, online from different people say that it's one of the best kept secrets because of the beautiful nature of it and um, I imagine with the right light conditions, the right day, you'll be hard pushed to beat this place in this area. Don't mind if I don't get a shot today. Really don't. Great recce. See, as soon as the weather conditions change now, I'm on it. I'll be back here for sure at dawn or before dawn. Get myself in and set up, work out my bearings, check out the individual trees, think about what I want to make a note of and come back for because there's lots in there yet to see. So that is a big tick for today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head over there, right down the bottom of the hill. It's all a big drop off here. That's what I want to explore right now. It's going to be a bit more overgrown, a bit more gnarly. And then just over here, we have a camp. Somebody's remnants of a, a camp, and it looks like they've gone to some trouble as well. Let's go and wake them up. There's nobody asleep. That's one of those leaves. Shame they've made a mess. It's quite old. This is well compressed. It doesn't look like recent leafage. It looks like it's settled, you know. Why did they have to leave that scar? And why did they have to put it at the base of that bloody oak tree? This is the problem I think we face right now is there's this growing interest in the outdoors and I'm just seeing a steel wheel. So we have this growing interest in the outdoors and uh, 
people that clearly have enough about them to build a shelter. <sighs> I mean, that is actually attached to the tree. One branching off there has acted as a support for one side, and then one branching off here has acted as a support for the other side. Ingenious, but I don't think the tree appreciates being tied up like this. You've got all this string and cordage left. Now it looks like somebody's wool jumper has been used actually. What a shame, yeah? What a shame they went to this trouble and then left all that around for the animals to get caught up in. And that bothers me more than anything because that can cause the ultimate damage, can't it? I'm going to uh, switch my camera off. I'm not here to spoil anybody's fun, but if they're going to set fires and they're going to jeopardise the tree and they're going to leave the tree tied up and they're going to leave the cordage, I want to tidy it up a bit. I get tired of doing this, but I'll keep doing it whenever I find it. All right, I'll break my knife out and then I'm going to tear this down. Back in a bit. I hope that oak breathes a sigh of relief. Both those branches were being pinned down. They won't recover because they're too large. Well, that one might, that's not so bad. So what I've done is, what have I done? I've left these piles of leaves and the big sticks there because I don't know what's living in there. And I don't want to disrupt any home. If it was fresh, if this was a fresh lay, and if it was built with solid timbers then I'd move it I'd level it off and the same on this side they're both the same see how deep it is there I just don't know what's living in there and I don't want to disrupt anything that is so that's the first thing the next thing on my mind was to release these two connected limbs why tie a tree down like that and leave it the positive is that the tree is now free the string that they used, to stri literally string, it's like parcel string. It's been here so long, it's uh, just turned to nothing. It's just decomposing. So that's come away very easily. And all I've done is wherever it's been lashed, I've cut it into tiny little chunks. Um, I can't collect it all because there's too much of it, but it'll decompose very easy. It's not going to cause any animals any problems. That's the point. I'm just going to cover over this fire scar now and then I'll pick up where I left off head down to this feature if I can find it hopefully before the heavens open or I'm gonna get uh, the house in see a bit it's funny how your day turns out isn't it <laughs> I come in faint hope of getting some light inside the hill and uh, no chance absolutely none it's just way too dark making my way out to that outer circumference gave me more light canopies open just for a short gap so there's opportunities around there but subject wise it's not brilliant this is what I've come down to check out now this place is a bit weird in its own right for how it's been formed and it's a permanent wetland we've got reeds in the background all the way around the perimeter there to a bank of reeds in the background over there that forest is the border between this place and the colliery ground so this was formed due to mining subsidence so about half a mile up to my right here is where they sank the two original shafts and as they go down they do exploratory digs I think it goes off a bit of a spider's web from where they reach the coal seam 
and obviously when they've come over underneath us here, this was formed by the land sinking into a hole and it filled up with water. It's, I think this is the water table risen to the surface basically. It's not very big, but it is very beautiful. And these trees and stumps, I'm gonna have a wander down there in a second, go and check that out. On a, on a really calm day, this will be like a mirror. So we'll get some fantastic reflections. No great shot, but decent corner content. So it sh should give me an opportunity to test out this lens. Okay, I'll drop this 18 mil on. It's a Samyang autofocus. 18mm f2.8. Grabbing a composition on this tree with a 50mm lens, I can get that square. I can't get the whole thing. I can get just the shadow. I can get just the tree. I can get 50-50 with it cropped top and bottom. But at no point do I get the whole thing. The 18mm is doing a sterling job of capturing the whole thing. I've got clear margin at the top, clear margin at the bottom and a horizon line in the centre. This is never going to be an award winning shot. It's really just a test for the lens in challenging conditions. So on my histogram I've got quite a lot of brights in there. I'm not clipping but the sky is very pale grey and I've got the reflections off the water as well which is what's up there. On the dark side, lots of shadow on the right, a little on the left. You can see the vignetting is present, I expected all of that. But in this shot, uh, I'm at f2.8, as wide as it'll go, it gives me a hundredth of a second at exposure. Without clipping, focused on the tree, I'm going to take that shot. I can't review the lens, I've got no idea what it's like, none whatsoever. My test shots were okay, but that doesn't mean much. So in the real world, I'll process this shot and I'll do as little to it as I can to make it palatable. What I'll now do is I'll do perhaps one at, I think it sharpens at f4. I'll do another at f8 and I think I'll go out to f13 and I'll keep it at exposure each time, adjusting shutter speed. So that's, what have I said I'm gonna do? f4, f8, f13, let's do that. I'll pop them up on screen one after the other. Oh blimey. Do you know what? It's all overwhelming because it's all new. Don't know what's just around the corner. This tree and that tree. Uh, so, last little composition. I'm not making my way over there because I'm going to get wet. Um, and as entertaining as that might be, I'd rather not. So, I've just got one last little composition to try and make use of the 18mm rather than just test the 18mm. So this is just a simple shot. Challenging because we've got sky in the background. Up to this tree from a different angle. I was stood over there previously, I just walked around here. I've also got these gnarly silver birch logs in front of me. So I just wanted to make a composition of getting in really close, um, using the 18mm for its intended purpose and trying to capture that tree in the background with maybe these silver birds just gently leading the eye in. It's nothing special, but compositionally, it looks like a bit like that. Um, I realise it's quite dark. Quarter of a second, F13, minus 0.7 of a stop, ISO 50. I get the whole of the tree in the background. I've got the water line in the top Top one third sky, obviously there, countered with the reflection on the water and then the foreground silver birch just leading the eye in. I'm underexposed at F13, um, focused in on the highlight on this major silver birch log. It'll work or it won't, but it, it, it doesn't really matter. There's some beautiful light on that tree at the moment and there's some beautiful light on this silver birch. Maybe in a few weeks' time, I'll be able to do a little review and I'll drop it in midweek or something. Right, 
I'm losing my voice. I'm just going to mooch down this water line. I obviously can't walk away from this. I need to just see if I can find any compositions. Take these couple of shots and uh, I've probably said enough for today. It's not worked out how I planned, but really does it. So <laughs> let's not break with tradition. Anyway, folks, thanks very much for watching. Until next time, please take care of one another. And as ever, if you can't be good, don't go swimming. See you soon. Bye for now.